when I, I lived in Chicago as a kid, actually, we moved around some. And I think it was when I was about 11 years old. Uh, well, actually, I had, I had gone to the city park, Jackson Park in Chicago and seen woodcocks. And, and I, I think I must have been very interested in nature anyway, because my dad uh, was a fisherman and a hunter. And he, we, went, we went out for picnics to the forest preserves around Chicago. So I was, saw plenty of nature, even though I lived in Chicago. And, uh, and I guess I must have been interested in it at some level. Uh, when, my, when I was 11 years old, my parents got divorced. Uh, my mother moved to Miami with me. My dad stayed in Chicago for a while. And so there I was kind of interested in nature, moving to Miami to an apartment that was right on the shore of Biscayne Bay. So frigate birds and pelicans and things like that flew by our window. And roseate, roseate spoonbills, I remember occasionally. And anyway, my mother got me a bird book, uh, Birds of North America, a big coffee table book edited by T. Gilbert Pearson. Okay. Uh, and this would have been a long, long time ago, 1949, November 1949. And uh, I had this big book. I thought, oh, wow, this is really great. You know, I can learn something about birds. And we had a, a deck outside of our apartment or some kind of thing that you could walk outside on. And there were trees around. And I saw a little bird in the trees. And I thought, oh, well, I wonder what that is. And so I went back inside, opened up my big book and paged through it. Oh, it's a blue gray gnat catcher. How neat. I think I'll start a list of the birds I'm seeing. So I wrote that down on some kind of piece of paper or something, whatever. It was December something, uh, 1949. Blue gray gnat catcher, number one on my list. Little did I know that I would continue doing that for the rest of my life. And then I just really started uh, going out. And I actually, uh, back in those days, kids could wander around freely. I took the bus from where we lived out to some uh, city parks where there were a lot of trees and out to the shore and just started seeing bird after bird after bird and writing them down faithfully on my list after I tried to figure out what they were. I misidentified some, as I think most new birders do. Uh, I didn't have any sort of mentor or any sort of anybody to to teach me anything. I had to do it on my own. Uh, I didn't have binoculars for probably the first year and a half or almost two years uh, that I became a birder, if, if you want to say that's when I did become a birder. Uh, my father then had gotten remarried and moved to Austin, Texas, and invited me to come out there and live with them, which I did uh, pretty soon, and stayed a year in Austin, Texas, going to school there, and again, uh, never stopped looking at birds, never stopped trying to identify them. I still did not have a field guide to birds at that point. I had this big uh, T. Gilbert Pearson book, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, then my mother moved to Los Angeles to be with her family, and I went out there and spent a summer in Los Angeles with her living at, at um, Playa del Rey, which is right on the coast with shorebirds and gulls and everything, and just totally got into birding. I mean, I was probably out walking around every single day. Uh, my mother then moved to Spokane. No, my dad picked me up there, took me to Spokane where he had relatives. So I was in Spokane, Washington for a few months. Uh, actually went out and camped at Turnbull National Wildlife Refuge with a, a friend. I finally had met a couple of young young kids, I guess, who I went birding with, who shared my interests. And so that was really cool. Then my mother came up and picked me up and we went back to Miami. And meanwhile, I had finally gotten Ralph Hoffman's Birds of the Pacific States. And that okay. was my wonderful field guide. It's still one of my very favorite book, uh, bird books of, of all time. Uh, and when I was in Spokane, this friend of mine, whose name was Paul Dix, uh, he had a Peterson field guide to Eastern birds. I had Ralph Hoffman's Birds of the Pacific States. I said, Paul, you want to trade books? Because I'm going now to Miami. So he said, sure. So I finally had a, 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 a Peterson field guide. And this would have been 1951 by now. Right. The Eastern probably. Eastern the Eastern one at that time. Yes. Yeah. And so I went back to Miami. And there I spent another 15 years. And, uh, you know, that's kind of, kind of I guess, my birding story.